I'm Ambassador James Watt, a former member of the British Diplomatic Service, with over 30 years' experience, mostly in the Middle East. My name is Peter Collicott. Like James, I was a member of the British Diplomatic Service for some 30 years, uh, serving in many places around the world. My last job was as Director General of Corporate Affairs in London, uh, running the Foreign Ministry. Um, my last job abroad uh, was as Ambassador to Brazil. What are the qualities of a strong future diplomat? Before we start discussing the qualities of a future diplomat, I think it's important to remember what the core qualities are of a diplomat. And uh, these are unchanging and they'll be needed as much in the future as they have been in the past. So I'll just start speaking about um, those core qualities. In the first place, uh, remember that we diplomats are channels between our governments and the host government where you're serving. We need to be absolutely discreet in our behavior and in our talk. We have to be absolutely reliable and accurate in what we tell the host government. We need to develop a reputation for 100% accuracy of what we're saying, 100% veracity. We need to be, I think, measured in the way we uh, react to things. We need to always have a calm way of speaking and, of course, uh, impeccable uh, politeness. And I think on top of all this, we need good judgment. We need to be able to judge situations. We need to be able to judge people. And in doing so, we will always come out with a balanced and measured and discreet uh, comment or, or, or opinion at a certain point. And later on, be in a position to influence and persuade. I think we also always need to be approachable. We need to have good interpersonal skills. We need to be open, good listeners. And we always need to be polite, of course. And I would just add as a final thing, always be well informed. Know what's going on. Know what's just happened. Know what your government's position is. Know what the facts are and don't be led into speculation or theories or whatever. Always be precise. What are some global trends which are transforming the nature of this diplomacy? Ah, well, there are a number that I would like to talk about. I think perhaps the first one is just the changing nature of power and economic relations um, in the world. Um, the tectonic plates are shifting, as we all know. Um, and the West, I think, is losing uh, a certain amount of influence, but still operating within a system of international norms and international laws, which was set up at the end of the Second World War. As yet, there is no power, um, no set of ideas which has emerged, which is successfully challenging this to replace it, although we're very conscious of the rise of other powers, um, such as China and other emerging powers. So that's the first, that's the first big change which is shaping, shaping the world and hence shaping the way that we have to do um, diplomacy. And it means that diplomacy is much more complex and not quite so simple as it was in the Cold War era when there was two sides, uh, the West and the East if you like, um, and many other disputes were subsumed or suppressed by that overall global order, if you like. The second global change I'd like to mention is that relationships between individual governments are now much more complex, um, much deeper than they ever used to be. It's no longer just a question of diplomacy about politics or security issues um, or commercial issues between governments uh, between the ministries of foreign affairs and the trade ministries, for instance. Um, it's now much deeper than that. Governments talk to each other across government, health departments, interior ministries, about migration and a um, whole host of, of issues. And these issues involve not just governments, they involve societies in our countries in, in, and in host, host countries, um, whether they're health issues, um, issues of migration, one can adduce a very long, a very long list. So that's the second 
uh, change that I'd like to mention, the different nature, more complex nature of relationships between countries. And the third one that I'd like to mention is really just a whole host of new issues which really didn't feature very much in diplomacy 10 or 15 years ago, such as energy security, um, food security, water security, climate change, um, health pandemics, et cetera, et cetera. A whole series of issues of sustainable development. These are essentially global multilateral issues which need to be dealt with on regional or global levels. And they involve not just governments, but whole societies. They involve international organizations. They involve NGOs. Um, they involve academics and think tanks, and as well as governments, in trying to address how we um, move forward with these, with these issues in the future. And so that changes the nature of diplomacy, both the nature of diplomacy in those multilateral fora, but also the nature of bilateral diplomacy between governments and between societies as they address these uh, same issues. And of course, our societies are already also changing very substantially across the globe. Um, but I think that's something which um, I'd better leave to James to um, address more fully. How will diplomats need to adapt to be successful in this new context? Yes, as Peter said, society is changing. And I think we all see that the number of tourists, uh, our own citizens traveling to all corners of the world. Uh, migration has, main, has meant that populations in many countries have become very diverse with many different languages. When you're using uh, your uh, social media or you're using your, uh, your blog or whatever, you're going to be read all over the globe by people who are interested in the subject you're writing about and who happen to speak the language that you're using. And so suddenly you're getting comment and reaction from not just people in your own country where you're accredited, where you're working, but uh, probably all around the globe. And you won't necessarily be able to tell where they are, uh, not very easily anyway. So that does make it more complicated. And I, I mentioned social media. I think that and the 24-hour news cycle has made diplomacy a lot faster paced, a lot uh, more complicated, and at the same time exposed the ambassador or the diplomat uh, to far more uh, scrutiny if things start to go wrong. First of all, the speed of the 24-hour, uh, 24 seven-day-a-week uh, media cycle. Uh, it is amazing how quickly news, uh, news outlets carry news, carry comment, and how quickly they will ask you or your minister back in your capital for comment. You really have to be well-connected. You have to know what the breaking stories are. You have to know what you're going to be able to say or what you're going to advise your minister back, at, back home to say. You've got to be well supported by your press office. So speed is important. Uh, clarity, obviously, in using social media, you keep the language very simple, very short. But also in social media, I think you have to be careful to keep uh, absolutely on the subject and to guard against being tracked off the subject by, by the way the, the item might be trending elsewhere. So be, be prepared to keep your answers short, to stick to a, a line. Don't always look for novelty. Um, it is good to blog. It is good to tweet. But do it, do it with, um, in, in my view, you need to do it with a good press office, a good uh, press advisor with you to help you get that right. So this, I think, is the biggest change in, uh, in, in, in diplomacy. If you look back, uh, traditional bilateral diplomacy was, was relatively simple compared to this huge range of options you have, uh, ability uh, to, to influence and to persuade and to convey ideas, but also to defend your country's position, to help your minister and uh, your other colleagues to uh, keep a, a consistent and credible and good line on whatever the policy issue is. I think the first thing they need to do is to be indeed adaptable, to be able to adapt to these new circumstances that uh, we've been talking about. Uh, diplomats always need to be flexible. Uh, they need to cover a whole range of subjects in relatively short order. Um, but I think in the new world that we're living in, uh, that will be even more of an important, uh, an important capacity uh, which they need to have. That doesn't mean that they should act like grasshoppers, hopping from one, uh, one subject to another, but they have to cover a very broad waterfront and be at least to a degree expert in each of them to have done their homework in each of these. 
that's one point. I think another point um, is that with this plethora of new issues uh, on the stage and with the new actors who we've talked about, namely not just governments but international organisation, NGOs, etc., diplomacy has become more public and less private. And diplomats need to adjust to that. Uh, that means that they need to be people friendly. They need to be out there talking about the issues uh, in terms of it, which people can understand, engaging in what we call public diplomacy, which is really persuasions of people and societies and groups rather than just private persuasion of governments behind, behind closed doors. And that leads on to needing to be conscious and adaptable enough to engage with the media, the 24-7 media that, that we have, to always be prepared to have something to say, but not too much to say, uh, to the media. And I suspect also in these days uh, it's going to be increasingly important to have a presence on social media. But if you do that, that needs to be a very professional presence and not a gadfly presence. And lastly, perhaps I ought to mention that in these days of pressure uh, for short-termism, for instant responses, instant responses to uh, tweets or emails or texts or whatever, uh, diplomats will have to struggle a bit more in the future to maintain their strategic focus, not to just be responsive individuals, but to give their governments proper advice about what is really happening in the longer term and what, therefore, the actions of governments need to be um, in this age when there is so much emphasis on quick reaction, um, not just by diplomats, but also by politicians. Thank you.